this is our vintage paper medallions and we've been making these for a number of years but it took us a long time we were using Auden in different dies to create the different folds sometimes the folds would crease and the the paper would would tear they just weren't the right uh, weight of crease and so I had a series of custom made dies that really work well so I'm going to show you how fast you can make this uh, medallion they're only uh, $15 and you get all this stuff so let me show you what comes in the kit so we're going to start with this these are a few um, chip pieces of chipboard so we have this and there's a little hole right in the center we have and the purpose of the hole in the center all of the pieces in the kit whoops we missed this one this is one I um, I just pulled out from a stack so I'm going to put a hole in that one right there the purpose of this is that all of them are going to line up by putting your a, a needle tool through this this is a book all you could use a corsage pen a tea pen um, you know anything an ice pick anything you wanted or you can just eyeball it I'll show you both ways so the idea and I've got this fail proof you don't have to guess at anything so I'm going to put this here if you'd rather just eyeball it you can and I'm going to use a PVA glue now PVA is polyvinyl acetate and I use this in all my bookmaking for this purpose um, this is acid free and it stays very flexible and everything you could just use an Elmer's glue if you want but if you have PVA go ahead and use it so I'm just going to put this on here a lot of this is going to be done with hot glue but if you put hot glue on here and put it on and it doesn't get spread far enough it makes like a lump in it so the PVA works really great for uh, the most part of this plus you have a little time to uh, wiggle it around and move it so I'm just going to put a little bit on like that and I'm going to put my needle tool through here and I'm going to line it up through there slide it down and there sets our piece and I think I'm going to move it over just a little bit when the holes were put in sometimes they didn't get them in just right so also use your judgment and place it there okay so that is our guide right there now we're going to take our strip here we're going to make this set here and when you get your your set the scallop set and there's a lot of different ways you could do this these two dies are actually exactly the same size we're going to use three of the dies three of the strips on the outside two on the inside but there's a lot of combinations uh, you could make if you had three of this one you could make this one be the outside this one be the inside but I like it better with the uh, scallops on the outside now you can e start this either way you can fold up and then fold down or fold down and then up it doesn't matter as long as you do them all the same so down up this is how I do this and you're going to see how fast and easy these fold up like that so one is going down and one is going up okay so I started down so I have to start this one down okay give it a little pierce a little uh, pierce give it a little um, press okay down I'm actually the one that usually does the die cutting and once in a while I get moving a little fast and sometimes especially on this uh, the um, straight ones I'll accidentally cut off a little bit of the edge and only get half of one in here or maybe I'll miss getting one of these in there so make sure you always have one going down and one coming up if you don't you need to trim one of them off or if you would ever like get glue caught on it or something like that you just have to make sure when you're done with this strip one's down and one's up okay so we've got these three done let's do these and I want to show you something um, these will not be in your kit like this when I miscut these I use them up myself and do it but I want to show you how you can do it most of this one is going to be 
hidden underneath here. Okay, so see how this one's a little bit shorter, but I wanted to make most use of this paper. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. This one takes a little bit longer to fold because there are more folds in it. These are closer together, so it's, since it's the same length, it's going to create more folds. And I press about halfway through. If you don't, it can kind of start going off to the side. Okay, one's going down, they're both going down, see that? So I'm going to have to trim this one off. Because one has to go down, one has to go up. Okay, so we'll do this one as well. I have to concentrate when I'm doing this. And you really can use either side of this. This is the one I think I like the best with this design. I'll look here in a second and see. Okay, so one's going down, one's coming up, so this one's correct. Okay, so we have this orange and black. This is a little lighter color. I really think this has a better contrast with this, so we're going to use this side. Okay, now we're going to glue these together. Now, you can use PVA or you can use hot glue. I'm going to use um, hot glue on this and I'll use PVA on the other so I can show you the advantages and disadvantages of each one. Each one. Okay, so the part that's going up I think is the easiest and if you're going to use hot glue you want to squeeze a little and don't use a big glob, spread it out so you don't have a big hunk of it there. Okay, so I'm matching up at the top at the scallop. Press, push like that, but open it back up so if you would have gotten any hot glue out here on the edge and you held it like this until it cooled and then you pulled it, it would tear the paper. So we did that. Now here's the one going up. So I'm going to put just a little smear, not very much, it doesn't take much, and spread it out so it stays pretty thin. Match it up at the top. The disadvantage to this, the advantage is, boy it's instant, but the disadvantage to it is if I didn't get right at the spot I would, wouldn't have any time to slide it around. Okay, now we need to form it together like a lampshade. Okay, so we're going to go, oh look, I didn't, I didn't get enough on there. See, it started cooling. So that is the kind of the disadvantage. One thing you can always do with the hot glue, you can um, take a heat gun to it and reliquify it. Okay, so there, I held that together just a little bit longer. Okay, now we need to put these together like this. So the one that's going up, and you don't have to do it on the one that's going up, but I just find it easier to bring this piece in and lay it on top. Okay. Okay, so there is our ring that we have made with that. Okay. Now let's make this one. Now this is what I'm showing you. See how this one is a little bit more narrow and it's actually crooked because I really shouldn't have gotten, I wanted to save paper so I went ahead and did it and this is where the, you know, the trim part that just has the, the name of the paper on it here but this won't show, only this part out here is going to show. So I need to make sure these are both going the same direction you know, if there's a pattern to it. So I'm going to go here. So see, these aren't going to match up down here. I want them to match up out here. Okay, now I'm going to use PVA glue on this one. I'll have more time to, to uh, move it around, which might be important. With uh, having to place it on this one. Use a little bit too much. Doesn't take much. PVA glue, if you guys haven't used it, is amazing. And um, you have to order it. I'm, I'm getting to, I, I need to order some more for the store this week because they stop shipping the 1st of October and they don't ship again until April of the following year. Okay, so it's stuck. It is down. I couldn't move it now. So, 
So the advantage is I was able to have wiggle time, but the disadvantage is if I have to get this apart, it would tear. I wouldn't be able to lift it apart, where if the hot, uh, the hot glue, I could take a hair dryer or a heat gun to it, re-liquify it, and pull it apart. But I, I don't do that very often. I'll show you in a minute when I would do it. Okay, the part that goes up, I'm just going to put just a tiny bit. And you have a little more working time to get it in place. And remember, the top part's what I want to match. I'm, I'm not worried about this down here, just the top part. Okay, so let's slide that up a little bit. Okay. All right, so we're all set. We have our two rings. Now we're going to bring in this part and we're going to put on the outside ring first. And whatever you want to be on the outside goes down. So I want the scallop part, not the straight edge, the scallop part to be on the outside like here. So it lays face down. Okay, so all I'm going to do is take this and if, if they've kind of stretched out, you can kind of refold them up a little bit, get a little crease in there. It'll help just to, to work with them a little bit if, they're, if the crease is a little more crisp. See, it's not so wide out. Okay, so all I do is take my hand around it, kind of bring it in, and flatten it out. That's it. Okay, now I'm just going to hold it here a little bit like this. I'm going to bring in my hot glue, and I really have found that the only way to really do this is with hot glue. I suppose you could use PVA, but it really, you'd be sitting there a long time. So I put um, hot glue on a little bit of it there, and the little fold, the little ring, is sitting right here on this lip. Okay, it's not up on this. It's right, I'm butting up to this edge right here. Okay. And it's going to take a little while for this to, um, that hot glue to cool enough. So I have some working time with it. So I'm going to bring some more in here. I'm going to go ahead and lay hot glue on that edge right there. And now you have to get it in there. Okay, so now I just bring all of the fold in and see it was kind of flattened out there so I kind of brought that together and that one's too close. So I have time to kind of spread it apart and try to get it, you know, kind of all leveled out and, and the same amount of um, space in the, in the folds. So see, I can just work with a little bit, hold it here. That one's a little close together. And just make sure it's all up against that little ledge. That's what it's there for. That's its only purpose is to, to give you some your automatic spacing. So we'll just hold it here for a few seconds. It takes longer to just hold it and let this uh, hot glue cool than it does to make you know the parts of it. Just give it just a few more seconds. Okay, now it may be tipping down a little bit because it's kind of going at a slant. So I kind of hold the middle of it like this so it kind of lays flat now. See how that raises up when I do that? Okay, now we have to put the other part on. So really these two outside big circles will sandwich this in like this. So I'm going to put a layer of hot glue on here because if I just put the PVA glue, it's just going to run down those cracks. I need a glue that will set up on top of here. So I can run some here. And be sure and plug your hot glue in, you know, a good 10 minutes or so before you're ready to use it because you want it to be able to really, you know, squirt out and uh, use it quickly. Okay, now I'm going to put my my book all in there, and I'm wiggling around until I find the one underneath, and there it is. 
so I'm even and now I'll press down on this get all my little spider webs away from my hot glue okay and that's in place so we've got this now this is the piece I'm going to use on the back and again you can decide which side you like better I like that side better okay so I'm going to put in I, I really like putting this on with the PVA because you have some opportunity to wiggle it around if you need to so just a little bit there and I kind of wiggle it around a little bit like that get it kind of seated in there and then I press it all down and we're good to go there okay now another template I've made to make this fail proof for you is this piece of star shaped paper and I'm going to cut away the excess you don't need to worry about cutting um, exactly on these lines it's all going to be covered up so it won't make any difference but if you but I found if you just put this whole piece here you have to be sure you get all of this glued down because you'll be gluing your uh, hearts just to the paper and not to this and I really want my hearts to attach to the chipboard and not just this piece of white paper since it's thin it's not strong enough to really hold it well so just trimming this back and it too has a dot in the center to find our level place so I'm just going to take and, and again I like PVA here because you have an opportunity to slide it around a bit Put it down all of those uh, you know legs of that star so they'll all lay down match it up and it doesn't matter if you get a little glue out here because this is all going to get covered up but you want this to be down nice and firmly okay now i've already made the decision i'm going to use the black hearts on this so you have five glitter hearts and they wouldn't have to be glitter you could make it whatever you want I just think the glitter works so nicely with this so um, I'm just going to put some PVA this part sometimes I use hot glue on those spots and that the star isn't really a I mean it is the shape of a star but the purpose is to have five little places for the hot hearts to lay in so I'm just going to go like that and see then you don't have we used to have to try to measure and guess and all of that kind of stuff I'm thinking I'm a little bit off I mustn't have got my um, book all in the right position so now I have a choice okay so there's all my hearts but see I have more paper here than here so I either need to take a heat gun I just you know like the heat guns we use when we're embossing our stamp uh, images and scoot it in here I think I'll do that I'll show you how this works it works better if you plug it in. now so I can wiggle that around now be careful you can scorch your paper but it heated that glue up and now I can wiggle it back in place so I'm right there 
Okay, and this puts, um, if you do those settings I did, this puts this and leaves you, oh, maybe a half of an inch on the outside of this ruffle. Okay, and those are all down nice and in place as well. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do, so we've got this here, this here, we're going to do our next ruffle. Okay, now I know this part of this ruffle has to be up because this is the part I have to hide. So we go like this, and I'm going to collapse it down, and there's my ruffle. And so I'm going to bring it over here, and I'm going to bring it all the way in like this. And see, these aren't even here, but that won't make any difference because it's all going to be hidden. Now, I put in a fair amount of hot glue, and I kind of poke it into the little folds like that. Okay, now leave it all the way like this and get it squished into those, but now I'm going to open it up more. If you put it all the way in like this, a bunch of this is exposed, but by the time you lay this on top, very little of your ruffle shows. Now, if that's the, the way you want your design to be, that's fine. But I like it better to where I open this up to it's about the size of a nickel, and I want the outside edge of this ruffle to hit where the, the scallops meet, where the hearts overlap, so you don't really look like a heart. It's just right up against there. So that's kind of where I tell that I'm where I want to be. And so I just kind of wiggle this around with the hot glue. And I'm kind of looking over the top of it, making sure it's in position. And I need some more hot glue here, I can tell. It's not holding. It's moving from there. Usually I have this closer to me, but I'm trying to hold it out here for you guys to see. So I'm going to go in there and get some of that hot glue and drag it back. Just hold it there for a few more seconds and we should be good to go. Okay, while I'm holding it there, let's talk about this. This is the scallop. And I've decided that the image I'm going to use on this is this little girl, this little vintage, um, it's off of an old postcard image that I've done. So I'm going to put that in the center. But on the outside of this, I'm going to put a glitter. Now, if I'm using a black glitter or a silver, um, a purple, anything like that, I'm going to use a black base for this. But when we get into using the Christmas ones, sometimes the Easter ones, I'm using light colors or snow, then I want this scallop to be white. But if you're going to be doing um, the darker color of glitter, uh, it shows less if you actually have this black base behind it. So this is set now, and I'm going to take the PVA again because I want to be able to wiggle this around if I need to and just do a little smear here and put it in the center of this kind of wiggle it a little bit get it to kind of set in and I'm going to look at this and make sure I am centered in there which I am now I'm going to take this is the glu uh, glitter I'm going to use this is the German um, glass glitter. No, I take it back. This is the uh, Champagne Chunky. Okay, so I'm going to put my PVA glue, fair amount, around the outside edge. So it's like I say, this is not just a smear. This is a fair amount. I do love use, especially on the Christmas though, I do love using the German glass glitter. It ages and when it gets to an age that I just really like the color it is, I put a, a spray seal on it and then it will stay at that color. If you don't, it, it'll get all the way black with tarnish. 
because it is real silver. But it has such a reflection to it because it is real glass and real silver. Okay, so if you notice I'm going around the edge because I want some on that outside edge of the scallop too. And this is where, if this isn't punched totally in the center, if I, when I punch them out, if I got a little bit off to it, you can bring uh, the glitter up onto this edge. But I got this one done really nicely. So I'm okay. And that's why I put enough glue there so it doesn't dry out by the time I get all the way around. I'm gonna go back and check and make sure because it's a whole lot easier to get all the glue on now than to try to go back. And you can, you can touch up after the glitter's on and, and put a little bit more if you missed a spot, but it, it tends to want to pull the glitter off as well. So it's a little thin right there. So I'm going to apply a little more there. And then you want to be sure I have a glass of water off to the side here. I'm going to get this brush in the water immediately. If you don't, you're going to lose your brushes. Okay, in the water it goes. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to turn it upside down in there. By the way, these are Sterilite containers. I get these at Menards, and they also make them in um, half sizes. But I wanted to show you, my. Uh, this is my German uh, glass glitter, and this happens to be the black. And no, it isn't that I'm cheating you and giving you a really empty jar, but I've put them in larger jars. So if you do, if you aren't going to put them out in a pan like this, you can get in here, put a piece of paper down, you can reach in and sprinkle the glitter. If you're going to use a spoon, be sure it's not a plastic spoon. Make sure it's a metal spoon. I have a, a set of... Um, they're fun antique berry spoons, silver berry spoons that I use because plastic ones create static and it'll just make it fly all over the place. So anyway, I make these to where I just have lots of room in here. So these are little mason jars and this is how I sell the uh, German glass glitter. And then I sell little refill packs too that you can put in there. Okay, so we've got our piece done here. So let's tap off the excess. Sometimes I have a clean brush, but I don't have one here right now. Paint brush so I can get off the excess here. Doesn't that look great? The chunky glitters are fun too. They're little tiny, they're actually little, little tiny circles. And they look really good. Okay, so this is where this is going to go right here, like that. Okay, usually I'll set this off to the side and let it dry, you know, 15 minutes. But for other for purposes that we're doing this uh, in a video, we'll go ahead. Now I'm going to use, and I think I'm going to use the black one. These are the uh, tinseled pipe cleaners or chenille sticks they call them now so it's half of one and so I'm just gonna make a loop out of it and this is gonna be my hanger for it but I want to make sure if there's this has a direction sometimes it doesn't but this has wording that the wording is actually going both directions so I guess you wouldn't have to say had a direction but I'm gonna go ahead and do this so this is right side so I'm gonna go like this so I'm going to use that in here and you can either put it here or you can put it here. I usually like putting it kind of up against the back of the hearts. That makes it kind of be centered. So I want to be right there. So I'm going to squirt some hot glue in there. up some of that hot glue I got spilled over there and put it in there. And just hold it up there. Let that get set.
I'll go back in a little bit and put some more hot glue in there. I don't think I've got it anchored down quite as well, but this gives you the idea of where it goes. Now I'm going to go ahead and put hot glue around just like I did when I put this down first. I'm going to put it on top of it. And I have to be sure I'm going the right direction. And since I put this in place, we know this is at the head. So I'll go like this and center it in place. Okay, and there we go. Now we're ready to trim out our piece. I'm going to let this um, the glitter set a few minutes so I don't knock it off, and I'll be back and, and show you how to trim it. I want to show you another place to attach this that also works well. If you fold this in half, and I forgot to do this last time, and just give it a little twist. Don't use up too much of your space, but give it a little twist at the end. You can create your loop, and then the ends will um, stay together for you there. Okay, now I can see where my right side is up by doing this. So I'm going to reach right in here, straight up, and put the hot glue right there. And this probably is a little easier than putting it directly behind the hearts. So I put that there. And I put it, oh I'm sorry, I was off camera. I was trying to look at it close. So I put it right in here and I just poked this in. And I'm just going to hold that up against that back circle while the glue cools and sets it in place. I'll show you how the two of them look and you can decide which way you want to do it. So this way, it's at the back like this. So when you hold it, it's like this. The only thing about this, it lets it fall forward a little bit because of the weight of it. But if you're putting it flat against, you know, a wall or something, it will support it and it'll be fine. But if you're hanging it down like um, from a curtain rod or something like that, it's better to put it in back of the hearts because it's more evenly balanced. So when I hold it like this, then you don't see it on the back. You see it more from the front, but um, it's more balanced. So you can just decide which way you're going to do it. Something else I want to bring to your attention is when you're putting your hearts on, be sure you do have enough glue here because this uh, layer here just lays on these hearts and if your heart isn't really secured down well to your chipboard, then it doesn't have a good base. Sorry you're hearing my dogs in the background. I do dog rescue and I'm doing this video at home tonight so they chime in every so often. Okay, so now when we put these down, there's really a good solid base for the hearts to support the next layer. I want to show you something on the back of these. This one came out really nicely. Everything's really nice and even. I like the color next to each other. But sometimes you need a barricade across these two to give it just a little bit of a contrast. But I like this one, so I'm leaving it like this. Quite often I get a little bit of glue or something up on it, and this one actually has a little notch out of it. I didn't get the circle cut perfectly even there. So these are just two of the fuzzy chenille stems, and I twisted them together just lightly like that, and I let them overlap. So this has just a single pipe cleaner here, or right? this, they're not pipe cleaners, they're chenille stems. And then this one has a little bit here. And that way, when I overlap them, the two ends will meet like that. So on this one, I've got a little notch cut out here. So I'm going to put this on here. Now you have to be really careful putting the hot glue on here so it does not show. You have to put a really fine little stream. So I'm just going to put a little tiny bead I'm just going to do it about, about halfway. Okay, so I'm going to lay it right on that edge. I'm going to hold it there 
just a second. stick put in here I guess uh, see if I'm braving it going all the way around it's going to cool off on me too fast I have to move quickly here Just having to hold it in place there. And I'm letting the two tails here overlap each other a little bit. This one's falling off, so I'll have to come back there in a second. But I want to get this in position here. And I'm just going back and tucking in a little of the white PVA glue to help hold it down. And if there's a little bit of hot glue that's wanting to peek out this way before it gets super set, I'm just pushing it back with my thumbnail and getting it out of the way. So now that will um, let that set a little bit. And that took care of my little cut out here. Now this one, I have a little notch out here. Remember, I use all, of, all the ones that I cut wrong for, for my stock. So here's a little bit showing here from a short piece. So I'm going to use this feather boa, which is a really cool element. And this time I'm going to put some hot glue on the edge instead of on the face. And I'll go halfway and I'll tuck this in here. This will give a fun texture to it. That's fun. I'm going to get some good glue on the end of that so it doesn't come unraveled.
how fun. So here's three different ways that the back was done. Here is just the solid, plain look. Here is the feather boa. And here is just a little bit of the chenille stem to hide this edge. So now we'll work on the front. Okay, now let's uh, do some trim work. So I'm taking, this is some glittery tool, and I've just cut off a couple of pieces here that are maybe four inches long. So I just kind of bundle it like this, and cut that off. And this is just some scrap of wire, probably about, um, this is maybe a 22 gauge. I'd really like for it to be thinner, but this is what I have on hand at the moment. So I'm just going to take my wire cutters, and let's just cut a few little pieces off here. And I'm just going to put a little scrap of wire here. And just twist that like that. Okay. And we're going to make three of them here. And I want that in there as tight as I can so it stays puckered up there. So give that a good little twist. And here's my third one. Just it doesn't have to be real even, just bunch it up. Okay, so there's three little puffs. Okay, so here's our ribbon that's thicker. And we'll put, um, we're, I'm just kind of pinching it together here and taking our scrap of wire and just kind of wrapping again. Get it on there as tight as you can. So I'm going to cross it. And that's why it's important to have thin wire. 22 is the thickest you'd want because you really want to be able to wrap around there tightly and if your ribbon is or your wire is too thick it'll be stiffer and it'll be hard to bundle it around there. So here's the other one. So we're going to have this coarser ribbon but it's got this really cool striped graphic on it, very bold. But then we're going to have the thin flimsiness of the um, tool and a little glitter on it to give it some contrast. Twist that in there tight, and I think just for some added security, I'm just going to take a little hot glue and kind of attach our ribbon together. That won't show, so I'm just going to kind of go down in there and give that a little extra security. Okay. So now we have our little pieces here, and that's why I just did two of these, because we don't want it to overpower our piece. Now, what I think we'll do, let me look forward here. I have a habit of always going on the same side, so I want to do this opposite. I always go on the left, so I think I'll take this one over on the right. get up here in view for you guys. Now I can use those wires to kind of tuck in here. And I'm just going to use this scissor tip. To kind of poke in there. And we'll take this one maybe come down here and poke in there like that. Okay, so we'll do it like this. 
And I'm going to add some hot glue, scoot some down in there, squirt some in there. Because that's not going to show, and we sure want that to be good and stable. And you know, whenever you're working with hot glue, you should have um, a bowl of water or a sink close by. So if you burn yourself, and you should also have lavender oil. Because the hot glue gun, one of those really nasty, I'm going to pull this in, really nasty burns. Let me pull my camera back in a little bit. Okay. All right. So now this is our start here. And let's take some of our tool and give it a little wispiness. I'm going to fold those up a little bit. They're a little long. And let's add a little wispy here. And we'll go ahead and get another one put in. Maybe in the center of it, like that. That glue is still um, a little soft, that uh, hot glue, so it's holding nicely and we'll put another one up here so we'll just kind of go in between those striped ones and so I'm going to go behind the tool and poke that in a little bit I can trim off what is um, too long but if I poke it in there to help it also you know pucker up and gather a little bit and give me a fuller look so I'm just going to go behind here and kind of push those in. Okay. And we can trim those off in a little bit when they are nice and set. Trying to get that hot glue string off it. If it's still there when we're done, we'll look at it. Okay, so now I've got the base of my bow. I'm just gonna cut a little hunk of that off there because I know that's too big. Let's cut a little hunk off here. I'm just cutting little bits off that I cut a little bit off down there. Okay, that's what's nice about the tool. You can just bunch it and cut it. Now, we want to get some centers here. And one thing I'm going to do, these um, little pumpkins. I love these little pumpkins, but it's like they don't have a stem. So they just, it just kind of bothers me. So I've got my stick here. Just went out to the yard and got a stick. And I'm just going to cut off two little nubs of it here. And let's throw a little hot glue in here in this little cavity. And before that hot glue gets set, I'll just wipe away the excess. Hey, Lola! Lola, no barking! One of the dogs is barking outside. I'm going to have to go get him. Okay, so here's this one. And I think that just really does the trick. Really makes them look fun. Okay, so there's a couple little pumpkins for us. And we're going to put them up in here. But before we do that, we're going to put our flowers in. So um, this has a natural kind of rounded flow to it but it would be too long for us to use so I'm going to have to take it apart so I'm just going to pull this apart like this and scoot it all together a little bit make a little closer bundle because it was too long for what we needed.
Okay, I gotta turn it my way for a minute, guys. Okay, instead of a bundle, I'm gonna have to put them in individually. This is what takes so long to do is the trimming just to get it how you want it. And I'm not getting it how I want it. It's still too long. So we're going to take that apart. I'm just going to put some in here like this. I like the curve of that, but if I wouldn't have had this big um, bow here, we probably would have been able to, to use it. trim that off there because I don't want that plastic to show. my way for a minute. Okay. Now, in the centers, I usually cut the flower pretty darn short. And this is just a paper flower. But it'll look good with our paper medallion. bundle these up here like this. Okay, we'll hold this in place. I'll kind of share it with you. I've got to look straight on to it to get an idea of my design, but I want you to see what we're doing here too. more of that flower to bring down here. So I'm going to bring some in here to set behind my pumpkins. These little trims are what really set it off. And I think I need one more little candy corn up here, but I think I want to tuck it into the tool a little bit so it isn't quite so bright. It's kind of hidden in that tool. So let's pull that out, stick a little hot glue.
Now I'll pull off all my hot glue strings. One good way to get those off is to take a heat gun and kind of wave over it and they disappear. But I've got so many things that are um, a plastic on here, like the tool, that they would just shrivel up as well. So I'm going to have to just resort to, you know, plucking off all the excess. But that gives me a chance to kind of look it over and see what I've got going on. So here is our second medallion. And here is our other one. So one's scary and one's kind of nice and just looking like fall. So this one I used the um, stem on it, the little tinsel stem. And this one I used a bit of ribbon on. You can do either. They both work very nicely. So I'm going to make some more and get them up on the website so you guys can see some of my different ideas. So thanks for watching. Thank you.